Let's continue our discussion of the solid principles. Today we'll look at the I in solid, the interface segregation principle. This can be expressed as classes that implement interfaces should not be forced to implement methods they do not use. Another way of putting it is use small interfaces, not fat ones. Let's illustrate this with an example that I'd like to say is fictional, but probably isn't. In fact, I wrote such an example way back when I was writing Delphi code for a living. Suppose we create a stream interface that defines methods to reset the stream at the start and to read and to write data into and out from a buffer. Once we have the interface, it's easy work to create a class that implements the interface for a memory stream, for example, or a file stream. Indeed, many libraries implement such a structure. However, consider instead a stream for a read-only device, say a communication socket or a read-only file. The reset and read methods are easy enough to write, but what about the write method? It doesn't really apply at all to this scenario. In fact, all we can do is to write the method to throw an exception. Ditto for a write-only stream, a printer port, for example. There is no reason to have either reset or read in this scenario. What's happened is that the stream interface is too fat. A class that implements an interface must implement all methods provided by that interface, no exceptions, even when it doesn't make sense. We find ourselves throwing not implemented exceptions and have the feeling that things aren't quite right. Well, our feelings are correct. Things aren't right at all. What we should do instead is to define readable stream and writable stream interfaces and have our read-write concrete stream classes implement them both. Our read-only streams need only implement the readable stream and our write-only streams the writable stream interface. So, reconsider your interfaces. Are they too fat? Maybe you could be violating the interface segregation principle.